everybody. This is Armida Abru Martinez, and I am holding today's session, um, which is Ask the Expert, um, because it is one of our first sessions, and I know we're still growing, and I'm so excited for the growth that we already have done. I've decided to also incorporate a little quick training right at the beginning before we jump into questions about relationship. So today's topic for Ask the Expert topic is um, love and relationship. Before I jump into that, let me just give you a quick, a quick background of who I am and what I do, what I do. So my name is Armida Bru Martinez. I am a life mindset, self-love and relationship coach. Um, and the reason I decided to become a coach is because I overcame all of those struggles that, I'm, that I teach my clients and that I work with, with my clients. Um, there was a time in my life where I felt stuck. I felt you know, I felt ashamed. I felt guilty. I felt like life was just against me. Um, and then I had a sweet moment of sweet surrender. And I say sweet because it was sweet the moment, but the actual work of getting to where I am took some effort, um, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I did a lot of deep work, a lot of healing work, a lot of inner child work, a lot of connecting to myself, to my inner child that was hurt and wounded because I did experience some trauma in my childhood that affected how I perceived my life as an adult. And therefore I kept bringing all that perceived notion of a child into my relationships, into my work, into it really trickles into your whole life. Um, and once I transformed my life, I just became passionate about doing this work, about helping others is truly why I'm here. I've never felt so connected to a mission and a passion like I do now. So it's interesting that the one thing that cost me so much pain has actually shifted into my purpose and my passion. And I, my mission is to help people re remove fear-based living and move into love and compassion and oneness first and foremost with themselves and then with everybody else, because it really starts with you. There was a point in my life when I wanted everything outside of me to change, but I wasn't willing to change. I wanted to control everybody around me, um, which is not a good, a good place to be. So needless to say, my relationships were suffering because I was trying to control everybody and everything. Um, and I had to look at myself and really connect to myself and really work from within. And when I started to do that, that's when my life really started to shift. Because once you do the work inside of you, you put out this energy, this frequency that just elevates you and it, ele it, it affects the people around you. It's interesting. But when we try to control the people outside of us by force, that's when we meet the, you know, the walls and the roadblocks all the time. But when you take the time to look within and work within yourself, since we are energetic beings and we put out a frequency, that's how we attract circumstances and people into our lives. When we do that, your frequency changes. And when you change, when your frequency changes, the people around you are affected by that. So not only do you fix your relationship with yourself, with yourself and with your wounded in, inner child, because that's what it is. It's going back and soothing the inner child of your of yours that felt unloved, that felt neglected, that felt disconnected, that didn't feel worthy um, for whatever reason, because we all experience different kind of traumas, but they all lead us to believe that we're not good enough at the end of the day. Just working on soothing that part of you, you heal yourself and you become this functioning adult who's in love with life, uh, unconditionally in love with themselves. And that's when everything around you really starts to change. That's when my relationship to myself changed, my rela relationship to the people around me changed. And the interesting is that I didn't have to do anything to change the people around me. That was like, that was like a, the cherry on top from me working on myself. All of those relationships started to blossom and improve because they all started meeting me at the energetic level that I was in. And there were some people that I lost along the way and that's okay. They were just not used to the new me. And, and that's fine. Everybody's got their journey and those people I love from a distance. So not everybody's going to up level and meet you where you're at. Most people will. And in my case, most people did, but I did lose some people. They, they just couldn't handle the new me and that's okay. I love them from a distance, but just wanted to share that everything, everything really starts with you. Any relationship you want to fix, 
we always have to look within and see what 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 part are we playing how what energy are we bringing into the relationship into the world because that's really what the energy that you put out is the energy that you're going to get back um one quick thing that i like to say is sometimes because we are talking about love and relationship is that we want to attract a relationship sometimes, right? And we want to attract a relationship because we want the other person to give us the things that we're not giving ourselves. So then when we show up from that energy to meet someone, we're showing up with the energy of lack, of fear, of control. And then we're attracting relationships that are meeting us on that level. So our job is to really work on ourselves and to give ourselves what it is that we are expecting from other people outside of us, right? So not waiting for somebody to do those things for us, but do them for ourselves. And I think a quick exercise that you can do is be clear on what's the essence that you're looking for in a relationship outside of you. Really get clear when that clarity is everything, because if you don't get clear, then you can't get what you want if you don't know what you want. So that's the first and foremost, get clear on what it is that you want, the essence of the relationship. You want somebody who's happy, who's, who's loving, who's who's passionate, who's fun, who's whatever that, that's gonna look different for everybody. And really tune into those emotions for yourself now. Your job is to, once you make that list, do those things for yourself, right? And start showing up for yourself in that way so that you can show up for others already in that energy and you can meet someone who's at that level. Because I think one of the things when I was, going through when I felt hurt, I was broken and I was disconnected to myself. I was looking for people to validate me um, instead of me validating myself. And what I learned is that you validate yourself and the people around you will complement that. So that's really, really important. And just something that I want to put out there because I know that, you know, relationships can be challenging, um, but they are, I think relationships for all of us, because there's two different people coming together, whether it's in a, a, you know, an intimate relationship, a friendship, a work relationship, a neighbor, it's two different people with two different perspectives trying to come together to form some kind of agreement, right? And the best way, possible way you're gonna have a successful relationship with anyone is if you have that successful relationship with yourself and you're showing up for others with that energy of I'm whole, I'm complete, and I'm here, I'm here to give unconditionally um, because that gives takes uh, the pressure off the people around you and they can show up for you in that same way. Another quick thing I'll point I wanna make is that we, when I started the self-love journey and unconditional love journey, I first had a little fine line about, okay, since I'm loving on everybody, does that mean now I get pe people get to walk all over me, right? Because I'm supposed to be loving. So I don't know if I was like, should do I set boundaries? Like, what do I do, right? Um, and this is the most beautiful thing for you guys to realize is that just because you're loving yourself unconditionally, because once you love yourself unconditionally, you start loving others unconditionally. It's just, it's, it's just an effect. We're all one, we're all connected. We're all here for a bigger purpose, right? And to serve one another. But if you think about it, when you're loving yourself unconditionally, that's when you're going to feel strong with who you are and what you want and what feels right and in alignment to you. And that's when you have the power to set the boundaries if something doesn't feel right for you. So if you are, if someone is not doing something in a relationship, whether it's a friendship, an intimate relationship, it doesn't matter. Anything that doesn't feel in alignment with you you're going to check with yourself. And if it doesn't, you're not going to judge the person because you, you know that we're all one, we're all connected, we're all going through life with our own issues to heal. You're going to tune into yourself and you're going to set your boundary from a loving place without judging the person or judging the circumstance, just saying, this is what it is. I'm, this is my expectations and I'm going to love you from a distance, right? When that's one of the biggest things that I found from loving myself unconditionally was being able to set boundaries because before, when I wasn't loving myself unconditionally, I was afraid to set boundaries because I was afraid to be abandoned. And because I was afraid to be abandoned, I didn't want to set boundaries because what if the other person didn't like those boundaries? Are they going to walk away from me and leave me, right? And 
So I became, I was a people pleaser <laughs> before I did all this work. Um, and people pleasing, what I realized is when we're people pleasing other people, we're actually trying to control the other person for our own benefit because their discomfort is making us uncomfortable. And so we almost, when we're pleasing other people, is for our own benefit, not for their benefit. So it's a little selfish thing that we do sometimes to try to get people to do the things that we want them to do. And so loving yourself unconditionally, and I say this to my clients all the time, does not mean that you don't set boundaries. Because at first, I think that at first, that's the fear we have. It's the complete opposite. When we don't love ourselves unconditionally, and we don't do the work to really heal ourselves by tuning in and giving ourselves those things that we crave for others to give to us, then that's when we're afraid to set boundaries. And that, that's when we get walked all over, all over us. But when you do the work and you love yourself unconditionally and you tune into what it is that you want from a place of authenticity, not because you're better than everybody else, because you're not. Everybody's special in their own right. And we're all equal. We're all here to love on ourselves and love on each other. And so just because you're doing this work doesn't mean that you're better than the next person and the next person. And that's why I say judging is not, it's not good. Everybody's just in their journey. And your job is to love yourself where you're at and love other people where they're at. But like I said, if there's something that's not meeting what feels right and in alignment to you, you can, you don't have to judge them. You can still love them. You love them from a distance and you wish them well and send them lots of love and light. Um, so that's the difference. So that's one of the things that I wanted to mention about really this whole work with relationships, it's really with yourself. Because once you fix your relationship with yourself, all of your relationships blossom um, and you, you'll notice all the beauty and how much you feel in control of yourself when you do that. So with that being said, I know I went on a tangent. I tend to do that because I'm so passionate about this. I'm truly doing what I love and I can talk for hours, but I won't do that to you guys. I know it's Friday. <laughs> So I want I have a little keynote. I do have some quick notes that I wanted to review with you guys. So today's topic that I wanted to talk about was the five behaviors that you must stay away from in order to have a healthy relationship. And I love this. And I don't remember these, some of these notes. I've listened to a lot of, I've been very blessed and very lucky to have amazing spiritual teachers in my life and relationship coaches in my life that have helped me get to where I am right now. And so a lot of these tips come from many different people. I'm the type of person that I always say, you have the power and we all have our journey, right? So your job is to find out information from different coaches, different people, and then you check in with yourself. You keep the ones that work for you, for you, and the ones that are not in alignment with you, you don't take. And maybe you have a mixture of different people. So that's how my beliefs are all, all, all settled about relationship and self-love and spirituality. It's not just one person. I learned and I was coached by different people and I took from me the pieces that were in alignment with me and I left the ones that were not. So I challenge you to do the same. Everything I'm saying today, take it with a grain of salt, take what works for you, take what feels in alignment for you, do your own research, look for other coaches, you know, listen to other relationship coaches, other self-love coaches, and really stick with the one that resonates for you um, and have your own journey. So a lot of my tips come from many different people and stuff that I've learned along the way myself. So just wanted to share that with you guys. So the first thing that you must, out of the five things that you must give away, that you must stop in order to have a healthy relationship is being right right? We have a habit. And I know because I was one of them. I'm going to fight you till I'm green in the face, but I'm going to show you that I'm right, right? That was me. So objective reality has no place in a relationship because life, it's about perspective. Therefore, in your world, you're right. But in the other person's world, they're right. So this is where the arguing you're never gonna get through each other because you're arguing, arguing about something that you both in your own right are right, according to your perspective, right? And so that's why being right, it's one of the things that you must, must give away. And first of all, if you think about it, when you're trying to prove that you're right, you're trying to prove that somebody else is wrong. And when you're trying to prove that somebody else is wrong, that's shaming the person. That's not a very good place to, a very good thing to have another person feel shame, right? Because that's judging. And one of the things that we must shy away 
in this journey of healing is judging, judging ourselves and judging others. And I'm big on that because I was a big judger, but I was so unhappy that it was so easy for me to judge others because that meant I didn't have to look in the mirror and take responsibility for myself, right? So being right, it's a habit that we must give away. Remember that the reason you're in this relationship is to work things out and to have a happy, thriving relationship. I'm assuming that's why you're trying to talk. So anytime you're trying to speak, make sure that it's because you're trying to make the relationship better, not to shame or guilt somebody else because the other person's gonna shut down and you're not gonna get through to them. Remember, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So make sure that being right is one of those things. And I know I had a huge ego. It was so hard for me to give up being right because I took pride in fighting for being right. <laughs> and I, But let me tell you something, I was not happy and my relationship was not blossoming. So I had to learn I'm either going to be happy or I'm going to be right. So I gave up fighting about being right. And I gave up on focusing on what matter at the moment. And it was to try to get along with this person who, whom I, I'm having a disagreement and try to make things right. Let's find out how we can work this out, right? So if I can do it, you can do it. Cause I'm telling you, I had, I had a really bad ego. Um, so, so trust me. And the second thing is controlling controlling. And I said that a little bit earlier, controlling was huge for me too. Again, I had zero control of my emotions of how I felt. I was disconnected from myself. So how could I feel some sense of control? By controlling, controlling the other person. And that could be indirect controlling or indirect by manipulating. Oh, I was a good manipulator. Jeez. If my ex, well, my husband I'm, was here where it separated, where the grace great as a friend, have an amazing friendship. If he were here, he would be behind me jumping up and down saying, yes, I was a great manipulator, um, which led to him not trusting me. How can you trust somebody that's trying to manipulate you? So this is the point that I'm trying to make, right? <laughs> um, we want love and connection with other people, um, but we want it from a, a, a place of lack and fear. And when we're manipulating other people, we may win the war at the moment, but it's going to come back to us and bite us in the long run. Because when we're trying, nobody likes to be controlled and manipulated. So when we do that, there's going to be some resentment in the future, right? And it may not come right away. You may get short term gratification and get what you want right at that moment. But then as you move along, you'll find that the other person is going to have built up resentment from being controlled because you don't like to be controlled. I don't like to be controlled and nobody likes to be controlled. So be controlling other people is the second thing that you must give up. And I got to say that was tough for me too. But again, if I did it, you guys can do it because I was really, I'm telling you all of these, I'm saying them with a lot of love, a lot of compassion and without judging you judging anybody. So if you guys are already doing this, don't judge yourself. This is just to bring awareness so that now you can start shifting these things inside of you. You can't change what you're not aware of. So this is just now you know, so you, you're, since you know it, you'll be aware of it. And when you catch yourself, you can pause and not judge yourself. Say, wow, thank you. I'm aware that I'm doing, you know, Armida said that I shouldn't be controlling and I just caught myself controlling. Let me pause for a second, process this, and move into my heart space and connect with your significant other in that way or whatever relationship. Again, our, I say intimate relationships the most because those are the ones that tend to trigger us the most because they tend to mirror back to us where we need to grow and where we need healing. So, but we can get this from our neighbors, our work, our coworkers, our siblings, our family, our friends. So you can be triggered by anybody else. So it's it's something that you can utilize with any relationship. But I know intimate relationships are relationships are usually the toughest because they are the ones that trigger to you know mirror back to us the healing that we need to work and where we need to grow. On a scale of one to five, would you give yourself a five on achieving what you want in life? If your answer is anything less than a five, right now I have something awesome for you. Achieving your goals and living your life out of five isn't easy. Most people aren't prepared to focus, stay disciplined, and do the everyday work that is necessary to achieve amazing results. But since you're watching this, then I'm guessing that you're not one of those people. And this is an opportunity that will change your life. 
Give to Get is a global program that brings together world-class coaching and combines it with empowering masterminds and networking opportunities. We provide five-star guidance for the price of a cup of coffee a day. To find out more, click on the link in the description of this coaching session. And then the third thing is uncontrolled self-expression. This was another one that I was good at. No wonder my relationships were all falling apart. Um, and that is, oh, uh, <laughs> you always, you never, you did this last week. Wait, no, three years ago, 10 years ago, you did it yesterday, the day before, you always, you never, you shoulda, you coulda, you woulda, all of those, right? Those are not good because when we <laughs> when we're looking at people from that when, when we're in a relationship we're working something that's happening in the present moment right and when we're bringing up the past first of all we're we've holding on where we've held on to resentment so now instead because we didn't speak our mind or maybe we did we have some resentment but we haven't fully let it go but we're bringing it up to the future in the present moment and if we're not present in our relationship where it is that's not it's we're not going to be fully available and in, in our heart space to connect with them from that space. So this is one of the places where you need to pass mistakes, leave them in the past, right? And we need to really focus on on the person in front of us from our heart space. And when we're again saying you did this last week, you did this, you always do this. We don't give the other person. Uh, we we're shutting down their their their. Where first of all they're gonna get upset and their ego is gonna come out. And once somebody's ego is out because they're feeling like they're, they're getting defensive because they feel like, like they're being judged, um, you're not going to get anywhere and it's not going to get you anywhere. So we really have to learn to tune into ourselves and really feel, feel what we need to feel and say it and learn how to leave the past in the past, right? And leaving the past in the past, I know it's hard and I, I'm a big, big I tell my clients all the time, do forgiveness work. Forgiveness work is one of the best things you can do. And you can do that right now. You don't even need the other person to be in front of you to do forgiveness work. Um, if there's, if you really want to release the past, leave it in the past, if you are in a current, current relationship and, and there's some stuff in the past that you haven't healed from that relationship, really sit with yourself ask yourself, like, what is it that I need to let go to have my relationship blossom, right? What is it that I need to leave in the past so that I can focus on the present moment? Because that's all we could really do, be present in this moment. And then, right, let it out. If the person hurt you, you can say, you know what, I'm, I forgive you, John, for X, Y, and Z, and I'm ready to leave this in the past. Just let it flow, do the forgiveness work. And if you need to do it a couple of times, do it you know you have fully forgiven somebody if you can picture them in front of you or you can think about the act that they did if you can picture them in front of you and you can hug them you know you've fully forgiven them if the person is someone who you still love and in a relationship and you would still love them regardless because you have that connection think about what they did to you and if you can look at that situation that arise and find either the lesson or the blessing in that situation um, and, and look at that situation with love and compassion, then you fully forgiven the person or the situation. But um, uncontrolled self-expression just really sets up the other person to block you out. Once we say you do this all the time, they're like, whoop, wall goes up. And now you're not, you're not getting anywhere. They're like going like this. So you're pretty much arguing with yourself because they've completely just shut you out. And that's not a way to fix a relationship or connect with anyone. Um, and again, I'm saying these with a lot of love. If you're doing it, it's just to bring awareness. I've done all of this, okay? All of them. So everything I'm talking to you about, I've done them all. Not my proudest moments, but you know what? From that grew the person that I am today. And I'm so grateful for where I am today. And if I could go back in time, I wouldn't change them because my purpose work was born out of everything, all those things, lessons that I had to learn in the past. Um, the fourth thing is revenge or getting even. Mm, this was another one that I was good at. I was always like, mm, what am I going to do next, right? Oh, you did this? Mm, now I'm doing this, right? This is not good for a relationship either, right? Because when we're trying to get even and we're trying to get revenge, it's, it's a weird place to be if you think about it. I didn't realize this after, but we're angry and we're trying to get even. And that puts us in the, in the perspective of being a victim 
but thinking it's okay to be a victim and victimize the other person because they did it to us. Does, does that make sense? It's like this weird cycle that somehow we, somehow we think that by getting even, we have the right, right? to hurt the other person and do what they did to us that made us feel like a victim in the first place. Isn't that weird and crazy? Like, I was like, oh my gosh, what, 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 what was, what was, where was, where was my head? What was I thinking? But then again, I didn't judge myself. And I said, I just didn't have the tools and the awareness. Right. And I was so wounded and so not connected to myself that that's the reason why I did all of that. And I'm so glad that I took the time to heal that's the, all of the pieces of me and to accept them and love them so that I could show up for myself and from and for others from a true place of love and compassion. Um, and then the fifth thing is, this is another one that I got really good at, which was withdrawal. After a while, I got tired of fighting. I got tired of all of the ones that I said, getting even. I got tired of doing everything else that I mentioned earlier. So then I went to withdrawal. And withdrawal, it's not good for the relationship either because you're giving up. When you withdraw, you're giving up for the relationship and you're not standing up for yourself. And I want to make it clear. I used to say I was taking, uh, like, you know, <laughs> like I'm giving up on this issue, right? Um, I'm not, I'm giving up on it. And we think that we just came to terms and be, that everything's okay. But if you're resentful about the issue, you're not giving, you're, you're not giving the, you're, you're withdrawing because you're not giving the relationship a chance. So if you think you're taking a healthy break because you're just done, um, and you don't think it's withdrawing, think about it. If you're taking a break and you're, and you feel resentful, you're withdrawing from the relationship, you're withdrawing from the issue. Therefore you're disconnecting from yourself and you're disconnecting from the relationship. And that's not healthy for a relationship either. I think we need to always, um, come back, right? So if you're, if you're having an issue and you feel like withdrawing, I would suggest you really sit, take a break, sit back. I think that take a break, sit back and tune into your emotions and tune into yourself um, and what it is that you're looking for, for the re from the relationship. But withdrawing is definitely, I've done that before and it really disconnected my relationship because I was really disconnected from myself, really disconnected from the relationship. When we withdraw, we disconnect from us, not just the other person, but ourselves, because we're not speaking up about things that we want. And if we're not speaking up for the stuff that we want, we're, we're neglecting ourselves and what our soul is needing and seeking. And when we do that, we start to lose trust within ourselves, within our boundaries. And then we start a vicious cycle of the more we do it, the more we get, we disconnect to ourselves. So please don't withdraw from other people. I always say if you need a temporary break from a relationship and if you're having an argument, if something's happening and you're feeling triggered and you need a break, this is the most respectful way you can do this. And I've tested this and it works. You pause and you tell the person, you know, I'm feeling, feeling, feeling is so important, right? When we're arguing, when we're in an argument with other people, we want to bring out everything that they're doing that's making us feel a certain type of way. But when we bring it up, we make it all about them. We don't take responsibility for our feelings. And that's huge, 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 huge. If you wanna to connect to someone and you want somebody to hear you out, you have to be vulnerable and you have to express what it is from that situation that's making you feel a certain type of way. So the one of the first things to is connect. So I want you to, if you need to take a break, pause. If you feel angry, say it. Don't say it about them. If you feel sad, say it. So you say, you know what? I'm feeling really triggered right now. You don't have to use the word triggered. I'm feeling really mad. I'm angry right now. Say it. Don't withdraw. I feel angry because I feel sad. I feel scared. I feel, you know, whatever issue that you guys are dealing with, this situation is making me feel sad. It's making me feel scared. It's making me feel lonely. It's making me feel uncertain about our relationship. It's making me feel whatever it is that you need to feel, that you're feeling express it. I was one of those people. I never wanted to take responsibility for my feelings. So any, I always wanted to blame the other person and say everything that they were doing wrong. But in, I never said how they were, it, everything, whatever I perceived to be wrong in my eyes, how it was making me feel. And people are not going to hear you because the minute you 
point the finger at somebody else, you're shaming and you're judging. And like I said, you're going to come to a, a roadblock. Um, when you can tune into what you're feeling and not even say what they're doing, just say, you know what, this situation is making me feel sad and disconnected and I'm scared right now. I need to get away for 20 minutes, half hour, whatever that is. And you take that break, but you do it respectfully because now you've said this situation I'm feeling, right? The situation is making you feel a certain type of way. So it's about your feelings and somebody else can hear, can hear that. And then you made a promise to return, right? You don't leave for a week and then never have any and wait for a week to have a conversation with them or check out for three, four days. I think the longest, if you need to, is 24 hours. But even that, try to get it for to a, you know, a, a half hour, an hour, a few hours and really just take that break. And then you're respectfully taking a break because you're saying why you're taking a break. So the other person can hear it and know it's about you. And two, you've made a promise to return. So now the other person is not anxiously waiting for you to decide to reappear whenever that is that you feel like doing it, which I was really guilty of. I'm really good about doing that. I was physically in the home, but emotionally I was not there. So it's like I was just painted on the wall and we had zero, <laughs> zero connection. And believe me, all those things, um, brought a lot of tension, a lot of fears, and a lot of unhappy relationships in my life. So withdrawing, it's something that you really, really have to um, work on. And um, just remember, I think those were the five tips that you are in a relationship to try to make things work, right? And you can either be happy or you can either be right. And always learn that when you're connecting with anybody, connect to you first, right? We always, it's so easy for us to say, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you without allowing the other person to see us in our vulnerability. And in our vulnerability is where the other person is gonna be able to hear you. And we're always afraid to be vulnerable, but that's, if you want a deep connection, you have to learn to be vulnerable with yourself and with other people. And that comes from tuning into your heart space and really expressing what you need and what you want from your heart space, because that's when somebody else is going to hear you. That's how you're going to start building your self-trust and self-worth because you're standing up for yourself and the things that you want, but it's just doing it from a place of love, from a place of compassion and without judging, just expressing how you're feeling because people are only gonna meet you at the same level that you're willing to meet yourself. So if you're willing to go deep with yourself, other people will go deep with you. If you're meeting people at a superficial level, they're gonna meet you at a superficial level. So everything really does start with you. So that's pretty much the training that I have for today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask and I hope you've enjoyed the training. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Armida. That was absolutely wonderful. I, I love the I love those five. I've got a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, even before you got into the five, you talked about when you went through this. I'll say transformation. Um, mm -hmm. Not everybody came with you. Right. One. How did you discern who quote unquote didn't come with you, and if that you were okay that they didn't come with you, and how did you discern? what I'll say to eventually reconcile the fact that they're not coming and you'd be okay with that to move on. It was definitely a process. It didn't happen overnight. I lost specifically two close people. I have really close friends that um, I, a lot of, I have a lot of friendships. I'm very lucky to have a lot of supportive and beautiful people in my life. And most people stayed in my life, but I had two in particular relationships, friendships. They were friendships that felt didn't fall through. And initially I was because I worked through abandonment issues as a child. I was like at first um, feeling abandoned. So I really had to do that deep work of showing up for myself and staying grounded within myself and staying grounded with what I felt was right and you know who I was, what I wanted, listening to my intuition and really just loving on myself through that time and realizing that the people who were the, the two people who walked away from my life, you know, they had their they have their own issues, you know, and and looking at life through their lens and still loving on them and saying, you know what, I love you. And I do, and I still do. And I love them so much. And I send them so much love and I wish them the best. And maybe someday in the future, who knows, we'll reconnect again. But as of right now, these are people that, you know, they're not in my life, but it did take a lot of um, 
a lot of holding myself and nurturing myself and doing that with love and compassion, but also not judging them. Initially, you want to go to the judging, right? Like they're just, and then, and really just training myself to not judge them and to meet them where they're at and just send them a lot of love and compassion. And just know that I ha- what I had to do was what I felt right for me. And, and that, I hope that answered your questions. That's pretty much it. It's just really showing up for myself from right. a place of love. <laughs> uh, the other is uh, the withdrawal. That's where I have a hard time. I'll get to a certain point. I call it death con six. I can take <laughs> death con one, two, three, four, five. When it gets to death con six, then I'm usually withdrawing. Um, what can I do from your perspective when it gets to that point um, to, to, I'll say, ultimately not withdraw? Awesome. Well, it's okay to take a break. I think if you're feeling triggered and you're feeling like you need to withdraw, it's a good time for you to take that break, right? But like I said during the training, when you notice you've gotten to that point, that break, right? Just really pause, right? You're aware of it. Pause. I'm withdrawing and this is not good for my relationship, right? So just pause and tell the other person, you know, I'm feeling triggered. I'm feeling off. I'm feeling, I'm not feeling safe in this moment for whatever reason, whatever it is you're authentically feeling, I'm feeling a little angry, I'm feeling a little upset, expressing your emotions, right? Because that's how the other person's going to hear you when you make it about you and you make it about how you feel, because then it's not about them. It's about what you're feeling. And then say, I'm going to take a break for, you know, I need a, I need a half hour. I need to go for a walk. I need to go to my man cave for an hour or two. And I'll come back when I'm ready to have this conversation with you. So I want you to do this. um, Take that time for yourself. And if you say to the other person, I'm coming back in an hour, come back in an hour. And if you can't and you're not ready, come back and tell them you're not ready yet and you need a little bit more time. But trust is built when you say something to someone, you have to follow through or are you going to break the trust, right? Absolutely. So you want to make sure you keep that going. And then, oh, this is another thing I forgot. I'll mention it's a good thing you asked this question. When you take that break, it's not for you to go and fight in your head about the, you know, because we tend to have fights in our heads about the things we could have said, we should have said about how the other person did something wrong. This is not a time that you take to go fight on your own about the situation. This is a time that you take to ground yourself. So go into nature go do breathing techniques, really try to get yourself into your heart space and and, and into your functioning adult, right? Because when we're in our ego, that's when we're triggered and we're upset and we're fearful and we're coming, making it about everybody else, really tuning into yourself. Take that time to really do something that, you know, if you like coloring, something that you like to do. So to ground you, so that when you show up back into the room to have this conversation or to follow through, you can do it from a place of groundedness and, okay. and connection to yourself, right? Okay. That's really, really important. So that's time that you're taking. It's just to so that you can calm yourself, calm your nervous system, tune into yourself, your emotions, your functioning adult, and then you can safely go have the conversation from a different mindset, different space, different energetic frequency. Perfect. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. <laughs> Armida, that was just beautifully done. My mm-hmm. thoughts too went on the part where you were talking about withdrawal. Mm-hmm. And what made me think is back in the day, they used to say giving someone the silent treatment. And I, I see that connection. And it, you know, I think of all the ones you mentioned, that may be the trickiest because. We may even feel like, well, at least I'm not yelling at them. And and, and I'm also reminded of having that intention of I'm leaving the room, not the relationship. Right. I love love how you just worded that. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You're leaving the room, not the relationship. And being that and, and sharing that, you know, quite often I think we get afraid to admit that we're up, you know, like to admit how we feel mm-hmm. that we're upset. I yeah. like the way you express, just be honest. Thank you. And I, that's where it comes from. You know, we have to learn to be honest 
with not only the other people, but ourselves. Because when we're trying to lie to other people, we're really lying to ourselves. And that further disconnects us from us. And that's how we lose trust within ourselves. That's how we then um, you know, don't trust people because we can't even trust ourselves, right? So I think that's one of the biggest lessons for me. And I was big on the silent treatment. That's why I said like, I was there physically, but it's like, I wasn't there because then I was giving you the silent treatment for days at a time, right? And that makes everything awkward. That doesn't make a healthy environment, right? And um, and I had to really work. All those tips that I gave and all those things that I talked about, I had to work through them. And I'm so blessed and I feel so grateful that I was able to become aware of them and really change them, not only for the people in my life, but for myself, because my life has completely transformed because of it. Not just my relationships, but my life, my relationship with myself. It's the best relationship I've ever had with myself. And I believe it's the relationship I was meant to have from the beginning before I got domesticated and started telling myself stories that weren't serving, serving to me because of the experiences that I had as a child. So yes, thank you. And I let, it was key. You said the most important relationship is your relationship with yourself. Once you get that healthy, then the other relationships improve. I also think, you know, when we use the withdrawal, the silent treatment, it's sometimes it's intended as a form of punishment. I know that was sometimes I would feel like I am really going to get back at him. I'm not. <laughs> I am emotionally distant and, and, you know, that crosses over to another, you know, dangerous relationship killer. Absolutely. I love how you said that because it was, for me, it was the same way. It was a way of punishing the other person. But what we don't realize is that when we're punishing other people, we're punishing ourselves because everything comes back to us, right? The energy that we put out is the energy we're getting back. So when we think we're doing something to others, we're really doing it to ourselves. And for some reason, we can't see that. We're just focused on hurting the other person, not realizing that that's really hurting us. Crazy. And hurting the relationship. Of course, absolutely. I and mean, how, how much do you value that relationship? And right. from my standpoint, if there were children involved, you would really need to, to work on Oh, Absolutely. making it work. Absolutely. Right, right. And, and for me, there were children involved. Um, there were children involved in my family, in, in my child, in, in my relationship. I have three little, three girls. And that's why, that was one of the reasons I'm like, I can't, I don't want, I wanted to break that generational trauma that we all had yeah. gone through, right? And so I was like, I don't want my kids to grow up like this. And so I really had to, they were, I mean, it was myself, but also because I wanted better for them that I chose to do this work and to better myself because I know that they deserve better. And a relationship, uh, this is another perceived thing that we have, just because a relationship, a relationship is not a failure if you guys didn't, if the relationship, the two people didn't decide to stay together. Cause my husband and I have separated, we've been separated for a year now, but we have the most amazing relationship. And people like sometimes think if you, if you in an intimate relationship and it doesn't work out, that it's a failure. And I'm like, it's, it's only a failure if you guys hate each other and can't even yeah. see each other's yeah. faces, right? We have the most amazing friendship. We do things with our kids. My kids haven't been experienced any trauma. I'm sure things have changed for them and they know things are different, but they're happy and they're thriving because we've stayed so connected and we're close friends. And when people say that our relationship has failed, I'm like, absolutely not. Our relationship is blossoming and thriving. It's just, it's not, a, it's not an intimate relationship anymore. It's a friendship. <laughs> but what a blessing to your children that you've done this for yourself and that for, you know, for them, well, for you too. Yes. But to have this positive relationship, that's very healthy. Yeah, to break the generational curse, I agree with that. Armita, as you went through those five, mm -hmm. which one was the most challenging for you and how come? Oh my gosh, I gotta say they were all of them, really all of them, because I believe we go through stages in our life. In certain stages, it was, it was being right. 
then it was controlling, right? Then it was um, the um, uncontrolled self-expression, then yeah. revenge. So right. they all had a, a level to it. But I think actually, I'm going to say withdrawal because I think about it. Withdrawal to me was when I was done. I was done. So I, ha- I was tired of being right, trying to prove a point that I was right. I was trying. I was tired of controlling. I was tired of bringing up the, the past. You always, you coulda, you shoulda, you woulda. And I was tired of um, trying to get, coming up with ways to get even and have my revenge, right? So I got tired of all of those. And then I went into withdrawal and I stayed in withdrawal for a long time and we disconnected. I mean, I think it's one of the reasons our intimacy fell away and our relationship, it's, it's a friendship now and not an intimate relationship because my, I withdrawal, my withdrawal was really long. And I mean, long, I mean, years, I was physically there, but I wasn't emotionally checked in. And so it's, yeah, withdrawal. I gotta say that's the toughest one because it's easier to just pretend that nothing's happening and just keep going with your day. And I think that's what I did. I checked out and I said, you know, it is what it is. And I was trying to punish him. Didn't realize I was punishing myself and my kids. You know, we weren't fighting and arguing. So I thought, because we're not fighting an argument, my kids are fine, but we're energetic beings and my kids were picking they, up. They can and, feel it. Right. They can yeah. feel it. And I was like, no, this is not right. This is not right. <laughs> But withdrawal for sure. But they all had their, they were all tough and they all had their times where they were shining upon me <laughs> and taking control of my life. But withdrawal was definitely the longest and the hardest for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And thank you. Thank you for being so open. And thank you for, I'll say, sharing your story with all of us to help all of us as well, too. That one takes a tremendous amount of courage. So thank you very much uh, mm-hmm. for that. Um, but also very gracious uh, and very humble. So I thank you for both your graciousness and your uh, humility as well, too. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Well, you know, I, I, I gotta say, I've learned from Dr. Joe Dispenza, who's one of my teachers, that, you know, our stories are not supposed to define us. They're supposed to empower us, right? And if you can really own up to your story, you can really make a difference in the world. So I don't mind sharing all of me and being vulnerable because I'm vulnerable with myself now. So it's easy for me to be vulnerable with everybody else. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Caesar, any, uh, any parting comments or questions, Caesar, before we end this session? Yeah. Well, I don't know if I mean, I had the same uh, sort of uh, feelings and experience, but uh, uh, I think that, uh, you know, you cannot reach total uh, peace and happiness until you're able to uh, forgive and, um, um, and uh, allow space Mm -hmm. to the partner that you have and trust it comes with trust of course right so so i think that that those two things there trust and forgiveness are so difficult to do but yet i think that they are essential and once you do that you you are definitely going to have uh, some sort of inner peace where uh where uh, you know where you can be happy and once you're happy of course it just uh, um, uh, it's infectious and uh, the uh, you know the the, uh, uh, the other person automatically will come and meet you uh, uh, and uh, feel the same sort of uh, happiness that you're experiencing absolutely I agree with that and all that forgiveness trust comes from you trusting yourself because that's where it starts if you don't trust yourself you're not going to trust others and that's, that's, exactly what, right. that's what yeah. i had to learn how to really connect to myself and speak up for myself with love and compassion for myself and the other person so that i could trust my judgment and trust my intuition and therefore trust myself and once you trust yourself trusting other people is it's it's it just comes naturally because when you fully trust yourself you know you're going to be taken care of and you're gonna either you're gonna you're gonna stay in your right, or you're gonna set the healthy boundary for your for yourself if things don't don't feel right. Yeah, very good. Very well said, Caesar. Great session, Armida. Thank, Thank you, you. Amalou, for coming on. Again, absolutely love what we're doing here. Love the mission that we're on. Love the vision that we're creating with Give to Get, and it's all because yeah. of you people. Absolutely, have a fantastic, wonderful weekend with your loved ones, with your family. And we'll see everybody on Monday.